Hi everyone, I hope you guys are all well. Uh, I've had a, a really kind of exciting couple of days because um, yesterday I went, I took the day off work and I went to see the new Fantastic Beast film, which I absolutely adored. I'm not going to talk about it here, um, but I just, oh God, it was so good and I was practically, I was buzzing afterwards. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So in my, um, state of excitement I, did, I came back home and I was just reading and reading and reading throughout the day yesterday uh, so much so that uh, about an hour or so ago I finished reading Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen um yeah just to put it in perspective I did I hard, I've hardly read this week until yesterday so <laughs> to, as I said to to bring my mind down to get <laughs> through the absolutely insane amazingness that was fantastic beast um i just sat and i read and i got through pretty much the whole of northanger abbey over the past day and a half so what is northanger abbey about this is uh the fifth book of uh jane austen's work and it follows a girl called catherine catherine Morwood, who has been raised with her family she's She's got many siblings, her mum and dad aren't wealthy, and she's just lived a very happy, happy childhood where she can live a very relaxed life. And what I mean by that is that she doesn't, she isn't in society, she doesn't have society rules around her. She likes to play boy sports and stuff like that. She's, um, she's very open to anything, really. And, but her biggest biggest passion in life is reading she has a very very active imagination and at the beginning of the book actually um Jane Austen opens by um talking about Catherine's love for books and she quotes I think it's probably about four maybe five books uh, of which are Catherine's favorite quotes and uh, she tells the exact books they've come from and such to show you kind of the wide variety of, of books that she's read. And throughout the course of this book as well, Catherine refers to um, various things that she's reading, which is really uh, lovely. Because uh, as, as a bookworm, I, I talk about books a lot that I am currently reading or ones that I have read. If someone mentions like a, uh, a book title, whatever, I feel like my ears kind of prick up and I have to get involved in the conversation. And uh, Catherine's kind of the same way. And in the the course of the beginning of the book, she gets invited to go to Bath for six, seven weeks. And in Bath, she is welcomed to society, basically. It's her stepping forward. She's 16 years old. She's um, exploring life, basically. And it's all about the people that she meets in Bath, the twists, the turns. Of course, this is Jane Austen, so there's got to be twists and turns. And uh, this man who she meets on her very first night in Bath and how he kind of changes her her life in a way and he is Mr Tilney. Now you may remember from my announcement video where I was saying how my sister really really likes Bang Rabbit, it's her favourite of Jane Austen's books and how excited I was to meet Mr Tilney because I really like him as a character. I, I always like watching uh, the North Agar Abbey adaptation which I'm going to show you the DVD cover of uh, and everything that I, I I really like and I had read an article about a week or a week and a half ago now which w explained why Mr Tilney is the best uh, best leading man in Jane Austen's books and yet he is completely underrated and, and forgotten about and I as soon as I met Mr Tilney I just fell absolutely head over heels in love with this man. He is so wonderful in regards to he has been raised uh looking after his sister and his mother. They are key to his 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 world his life. And so because he has been living in this family unit with that 
um, that kind of equation, it means he knows about prices of fabrics. He knows about little things that, that women do, what they talk about, uh, things that they carry with them, stuff like that. So he is very, very confident at the very first mo first meeting of Catherine. He's talking um, about her gown, how much the fabric costs. He's asking her if he's going to make an entry in her diary that night, things like that. Things that are very personal and things that other leading men like Darcy would never do. He would never talk about it. Even if he knew about that stuff, he wouldn't talk about it because it's not the, not I suppose you could say, not the place to do it. But at the same time, it is the place to do it. And I just, I love the fact that he's just so open to do that um, in a situation where society itself may say, no, this is not the correct place. And it's what makes him so uh, endearing. It, there's loads of women, uh, older women and, and young women as well, in that, in that, that setting, in that uh, ballroom, assembly room, uh, who are drawn to this man because he's having these conversations that their husbands or sons or partners or, or you know the the people who other men who are wanting their attention will not talk about and he's very relaxed he's very open and it's so refreshing he is not judgmental of people at all as well he's kind of in a sense playing with Catherine you could say teasing her um you know it's asking her about if he's going to make an entry in her diary that night things like that um you, you know in a, a he's teasing in that that kind of regard but he's not doing it to win um feel like he's winning over her in regards to he's winning a point he's you know he's not trying to he's not being horrible it, by being nice um, and laughing at her behind her back, so he genuinely is this really lovely, warm, open person, and it's so refreshing to to have that uh, in Jane Austen's world. Now, of course, you could say the same thing. How you, well, you do have other open, warm-hearted people like Mister Bingley in Pride and Prejudice, and yes, he is. He's a very constant, smiley man. He's very warm, very happy, very. Um, very wonderful to be around, very warm, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, but he wouldn't have those various conversations again, um, because he he's not of that status of understanding the boundary um, between being poor and being rich. I mean, he he has some money but it's not uh it's no it's not like a massive amount like mr bingley or mr darcy he very much feels like a a i know it's going to be well, probably well i'm not wrong but I'm, I'm debating the word in my head um a normal man in a jane austen world uh, he feels like he's someone who you would meet in a shop in the street, in in a party, um, who just is on the same level as you. She's not, Catherine's not hunting for uh, a man of wealth as, you know, Mrs. Bennet is for her daughters in Pride and Prejudice. She's just there to have a good time, um, to see what the world is like. And she happens to bump into this man who she instantly is able to connect to. And he's so kind to her. And she says, um, I'm, you know, I'm a duck out water as it were. I, 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 I'm not from this place. I, um, fish out water. Why do I say duck out water? <laughs> well, that's a funny blooper. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm from the country. I've never been in society. I don't know what things are. I don't know what to do. And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. Let me help you out. And he's so wonderful to her, as is his sister, Eleanor, Eleanor Tilney, um, who Catherine grows really close to. But just as there are these really wonderful characters in society she meets, she also meets some bad ones. And the key bad um, society member is Isabel. Isabella. Uh, she is very interesting to me. In earlier books like Pride and Prejudice, Jane Austen introduced us to Lydia, this girl who is a terrible flirt, 
she is quite in a sense scandalous especially what she does uh later on in in, in the book uh with one of the characters um but she is at the same time a ditzy naive girl who doesn't understand what she is doing nor the consequence of her actions have done to the family isabella however is a massive flirt just like Lydia, but she knows exactly what she is doing. She is so calculated. She, uh, you know, as as in the in the drama with Carrie Mulligan, there's there's this really really um, really interesting moment where she's tempting these two men with her eyes just by how she's looking at them, and it just clearly shows in that one moment how she's able to pull these like she's like a spider pulling people into her, her grass and of course Catherine is very naive and she doesn't understand what's wrong with what Isabella is doing she's just like oh there's this really glamorous girl who wants to be my friend yeah I'll tag along I'll do whatever and of course she finds out that not all people in society who she um meets who come across as being good people are actually genuinely good um but again there's a naivety aspect of you know for Catherine for that but I don't um I don't feel like she did wrong by going on with off you know with Isabella and go doing the various things that, that they, they do because she needed that to learn um, things so if something happens like say like Lydia thing in Pride and Prejudice where you know with the running off and everything and a scandalous wedding I don't ever feel that Lydia learnt her lesson from that because she never contemplated the impact that it meant for her family whereas Catherine she's naive and go you know gets taken under the wing of this this girl um and even though the impact to her family is not the same as Lydia in Pride and Prejudice with her actions um it's still there's still an impact and she learns very very quickly um once that impact has been made what happened what she she did wrong by becoming friends with this girl um and what that's done to her family and so i love that the fact that, that jane austen has given that naive aspect um a, a, a consequence and the and the learning process for the character i really respect her for doing that i love that she gave mr tilney to catherine um mr tilney is i think my favorite jane austen leading man he's just so wonderful i adore his sister eleanor as well she is wonderful I hate his dad because you know obviously his dad's a just horrible man um and for the various other characters who meet on the way, it kind of feels more that this this is the first one of her books I can genuinely say that I feel that this could be a genuine scenario that is really deep rooted as something that could have happened. Um, because you know how sometimes you have, like, say for example, Neil Gaiman's books you know how much i love neil gamer's book like good omens or something like that i know he wrote that terry pratchett but go with it or uh, Coraline, which she wrote by himself it's in our time it's in our world but there's somewhat slightly off so it disconnects you from our world and i'm okay with that that's fine that's how i feel about jane austen's other books that it's real world but it's not quite this one i felt is our world um, and I don't know if that's due to a shift in her way of expressing herself or something, because it didn't feel any, particularly different from her other books in the way that she wrote it, the way she constructed it and everything. But at the same time, I felt like this was more rooted, and I really loved that. Um, it really gave more of a, a connection in, in a different way to the story for me and I'm really glad that it was this one and I find it so interesting that Northanger Abbey is the title of the book when Northanger Abbey isn't they don't actually go there until about 30 40 pages from the end 
it's you know that obviously there's very interesting stuff that happens at North Anger Abbey which then leads to the finale of the book but then at the same time you could easily look at the various events that happen and go well North Anger Abbey is just that little bit at the end it's not much but it is it's quite a big deal and I find it very interesting therefore that North Anger Abbey is the title of the book um entirely because usually like Mansfield Park well the whole thing is set in Mansfield Park so that makes sense unless you look at North Anger Abbey the next one I think oh it's going to be all in North Anger Abbey no it ain't um so yeah the trials of tribulations the characters the plot the wonderful mr tilney everything all combined i absolutely loved reading north anger abbey i definitely recommend it um i definitely read it again and mr tilney is by far now my favorite favorite leading man of jane austen now, when it comes to adaptations, as I said, the DVD I want to show you is the ITV version that was made a few years back when they did Mansell Park Persuasion and North Anger Abbey in one year um, adaptations. And this is the one with Felicity Jones and J.J. Fields, uh, who play Catherine Morwood and uh, Mr. Tilney. J.J. Fields in this, it's perfect perfect casting he is absolutely wonderful as mr tilney they both play each off each other wonderfully and i also love the the way that they um show catherine's really active imagination because they'll be seen as she's in a carriage and she's bored and her mind wanders and suddenly the carriage is being attacked by um highwaymen and stuff like this and then it cuts and then she's still in the carriage she's just realized that she you've, you've just pulled out of her mind so there's all these little things that get played which really shows how Catherine's passions for books and her active imagination um can lead her down some very weird and wonderful um pass and what that means for something that she does at North Anger Abbey uh which is you know very intriguing but JJ Fields is absolutely wonderful as Mr Tilney the casting of him was perfect and the way they two play off each other and how they're so cute yet they're kind of very innocent like they don't know how to be around each other they're kind of gushy it's it, oh it's so cute and it's so wonderful I absolutely love it and of course the Jane Austen BBC radio series, uh, which I absolutely love. Uh, let's see who is in this one. Where is it? North Anger Abbey. Oh, yeah. So Amanda Root, Emily Watcher, David Harwood, Julia McKenzie, Claire Skinner, Saskia Reeves, Jenny Agter, Jonathan Keeble, is she, uh, she Graval? I think, uh, sorry if I. <laughs> mispronounce your name, I think that's how you say it. Uh John Rowe, Gerald McDermott, Susan Dameson, John Spanner, and Harry Myers. Uh there has also been recently I've got it via iTunes, so I don't have a physical copy to hold, but Audible uh I think a year or maybe two ago now did uh, a new production in North Northanger Abbey with Eleanor Tomlinson uh playing Eleanor Tilney and that is absolutely fantastic uh version as well you can get it obviously through audible and um itunes as well because that's where i got my copy but i really recommend that one because that one's a really good radio version as well okay guys that's all i can think of to say about north anger abbey have you read this book i'd love to know what you think you can leave me a comment in the comments box below or give me a thumbs up thumbs down entirely up to you i'll let you decide and now we'll be back to announce what book i'm going to be reading next all right guys bye